I'm really pleased to have as my special guest on the program Colette Higgins. She is the Dean of Academic Affairs for Windward Community College. Aloha and welcome, Colette. Thank you. <laughs> I've known you a long time, yes, actually. That's right. <laughs> and you are a history professor as well before you took over this uh, position at Windward Community College. Right. I taught history for about 24 years over at Kapi'olani Community College. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. And while you were there, mm -hmm. you developed a passion for Queen Kapi'olani. Yes, that's right. So back in 2002, they asked me to do a presentation for some visitors from the mainland. And they said, well, why don't you do a presentation about Kapi'olani, Queen Kapi'olani, the namesake of the school. So I had to do some research at that point. <laughs> and, and that was back in 2002. So that's where it all started for me. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. your passion for mm -hmm. the history of Queen Kapi'olani. Sure. <laughs> Just in case there's somebody watching, like a visitor, for mm -hmm, example, mm -hmm. who is not familiar with Queen Kapi'olani, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. can you give us a capsule? Oh, of the, who she was? Yes. Okay, yeah, so she, Queen Kapi'olani, her, her claim to fame, I guess, is in part because she was married to the king, right? So King David Kalakaua, she married him back in 1863. He wasn't even king yet. He becomes king in 1874, so at that point, now she's queen consort, or she's, he's named her the queen, right? Because uh, uh, he's the reigning monarch. And so she actually rules as a queen until he dies in 1891. Mm. And I think most people have heard about uh, Kapi'olani's uh, Med Medical Center for Women and Children. Yes. Yes, of so that's that's really her legacy. Yes. So when she came back from this trip in 1887, I think it was this trip and a hospital that she saw on Roosevelt Island in New York that inspired her to actually open up the hospital. Um, so it was called the Maternity Home when she opened it in 1890. So think about it. She's actually inherited the home from her sister in 1884. And then she goes on this trip in 1887. She sees this hospital where there's a maternity ward uh -huh. at Roosevelt Island. Yeah. And she's talking Hawaiian baby talk to the babies. Again, she loves children, <laughs> right? And so the newspaper account says she's talking baby, Hawaiian baby talk, and they seem to understand everything she says. Uh -huh. um, and so she sees the sterile conditions of this charity hospital uh -huh. for a maternity ward for, for women. And so she wants to bring that back to Hawaii. And so mm -hmm. she opens up a hospital in 1890. So I was born there. President Obama was wow. born at Kapi'olani, yeah. right? So a lot yeah. of people in Hawaii have been born at that hospital. Hospital. So that truly is her legacy, and most people, I think, can name the hospital, yeah. right? And they go, yeah, that's Queen Kapi'olani's yes, hospital. Yes. But they can't tell you much about the queen herself. Yeah. And you actually did a blog in the footsteps of Queen Kapi'olani. Let's go to the beginning. How did it all start with your, your passion in, in the, on this subject, and then take us through the journey? Okay, sure. So back in 2002, when I was asked to do that presentation for the visitors, um, I realized that there's only one little book about Queen Kapi'olani. It's only about 60 pages long. About half of it are chants and there's pictures. So it's really about 30 pages of text. So there wasn't much on Queen Kapi'olani to start with. So as I was doing presentations for Kapi'olani Community College, whenever people would ask me to, I just start digging a little bit more and researching. And there are things about the Queen that I realized I didn't know and I just wanted to find out. And so it's been quite a quest over the years. Um, I got sabbatical last year in 2015, 2016. And so um, I was thinking, what could I do that's related to Queen Kapi'olani that involves travel, because I wanted to travel. Yeah. And so I wanted to experience the journey that she went on in 1887. So Queen Kapi'olani traveled all the way to London um, in 1887 to be there for Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee. So I thought, what if I could retrace the footsteps? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I did. Wow, what an adventure. Yeah. So let's start mm -hmm. at the beginning. Sure. Where did her journey start? So her journey started uh, basically in those days to get to England from Hawaii. It took 25 days, right? Wow. So it was a ship from, for her, it was a ship from Honolulu to San Francisco. So we took a plane, we took Hawaiian Air, because there are, are no ships today that'll take you to San Francisco. Um, and then we took a train across the continent, retracing her footsteps. So we went, um, we took the California Zephyr. So basically in her days, it was a train across the continent and she had a Pullman car. Mm -hmm. For us, it was Amtrak. The California Zephyr was uh -huh. the name of the train. It was a romant. And so we went across the continent. It took about 52 hours to get to Chicago from wow. the Bay Area, from Oakland sure. area. And then uh, we stayed overnight in Chicago, retracing her footsteps. She only uh -huh. changed trains in Chicago. We stayed overnight and then another 17 hours to get to D.C. So from D.C., we then spent, so we did a week in San Francisco, mm -hmm. a week in D.C., and then we went, took a train up to uh, Boston, because she did, and mm -hmm. so we spent about a week there, and then a train down to New York, because she spent um, some time in New York, so we did there, and then we got the Queen Mary II across the Atlantic. <gasps> oh so, my goodness, <laughs> And so wow. today, today, we pulled into Southampton, uh -huh. um, because that's where the Queen Mary goes, uh -huh. um, but in her days, in 1887, it would have been from New York to Liverpool. So we had to take okay. a train from Southampton up to Liverpool, 
and then we spent a few days there and then from Liverpool down to Norwich where she stayed a few days uh -huh. so we got to see some things there and then into London so trains ships uh, yeah wow. oh <laughs> Planes, my goodness yeah. all to retrace her footsteps I wanted to see what she saw and and so I, I did there's a lot of buildings that are still there especially in England right and so I got to see sort of the terrain she saw when she was on the train. I got to experience the nine day journey across the Atlantic wow. on a huge ship, a beautiful ship. Uh -huh. um, and I've never been on a, a, sh a cruise before. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this is the transatlantic yeah. crossing. Yeah. So much like the queen <clears throat> had experienced that. I got seasick. The queen never got seasick when she <laughs> traveled, but I did. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. no, but it was yeah. good. It was, yeah. it was a great experience. So I got to, to see some of the buildings that she saw. Um, uh, it, it was just um, amazing, yeah. When you were going across the country, across mm -hmm. the United States, mm -hmm. did you think about Queen Kapiolani mm -hmm. like every day, every hour, or what was your whole, when you're, I mean, the topic in the footsteps of mm -hmm. Queen Kapiolani, mm -hmm. you must right. have just had this incredible feeling of, of history that in right. the making. So actually my, my sabbatical started in August of 2015 but I didn't go on to the trip until April of 2016. So okay. it took that long for the planning. So yeah. my husband Gary did all the logistics and planning and he Thank was you, traveling Gary. with me. <laughs> yeah. So he's great. So he yeah. did all the, tra all the logistics and planning. And then I was doing the research, the historical research. Okay. So I was digging through newspaper <clears throat> accounts. Yeah. So today in our modern times you can go on newspaper.com, British Archives mm -hmm. has newspapers mm -hmm. online. And so basically I could I could uh, search Kapi'olani 18 and pull up all these different newspaper sources. So I was doing research, that plus Hawaii State Archives. So I spent, you know, August all the way to April just doing the research, figuring out where exactly she visited because the one book that was written about the journey didn't really say what specific school she visited. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't quite sure some of the destinations, so I really had to do some research there. So as I was doing the research, I'd get these little stories that came out, which are wonderful. And then as I'm retracing her footsteps, I could I remember the stories that I, I learned about, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was reading the, the diary of one of her servants, uh, McGuire, he had kept a daily diary and I'm using that. And so I'm basically, I'm, I've already done the research and that's the best way to travel, right? When you already know yeah. about the destination, yes, you, yes. Know, you know what you're looking for uh -huh. and then you actually go and see it and to be standing in the spot, to be looking wow. at the same view that she had to experience a lot of these buildings that she did as well. Yeah. That to me was amazing. Yeah. So there's some great stories I learned about her that I never knew before and I feel like I know her better as a yes, result. She's yes, a great woman. Course. Share yeah. with us one of those stories. Okay, so one of the stories uh, that I thought was kind of amazing was she went to um, Mount Vernon. So Mount Vernon is actually uh, the home of George Washington, right? Yeah. It's not too far from mm -hmm. DC. So she took a, a, a boat up the Potomac River. So we took a boat up mm -hmm. the Potomac River. And so we're approaching it the same way she approached it. Um, the dock is there today, right? Mount Vernon is a, a, a beautiful uh, home and it's still there. His, uh, George Washington's grave is there. So I had been reading about this journey and how she had visited that. And, uh, and um, the, the children had waved to her before she left on the boat. They had named the, the, the the transport boat that takes goes from the larger ship to shore that named the transport boat after the queen Kapi'olani in honor of her was a brand new little boat um, and there were 75 people in the traveling party it was senators and military wow. personnel and their wives and their uh -huh, children uh -huh. so she goes and she's visiting Mount Vernon which was a historical site then um, and she was kind of annoyed at the people um, who were being disrespectful mm -hmm. because this is where he he lived this mm -hmm. is where he died George mm -hmm. Washington of all people right and so they even write about it in the report you know the president of that society that, that manages Mount Vernon, they write about the fact that she was being so respectful, more so than the people who are traveling in their party. Isn't so the people something? who are traveling with her were more of the carnival atmosphere. Mm -hmm. They were just sort of talking and enjoying themselves, mm -hmm. but she was kind of like, but they should be more respectful. This is where he died. Wow. This is his home, right? Yes. And so I was quite amazed that she was so honored to be able to visit George Washington's uh -huh. home and the way that she felt about it. Yeah? So little stories like that I'd find by just digging here and digging there. And, and so I, I got to learn a little bit more about her personality. Speaking mm -hmm. of her personality mm -hmm. and the fact that you got to learn more mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. tell us about that. Uh, about the queen, her personality. Yeah, her she personality. seems, they describe her almost consistently in all the newspaper accounts as amiable, friendly, kind. She seems to smile a lot. She's enjoying herself. A, a lot like deal. you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I smile, I think it's from Hawaii. We <laughs> so one of the articles in the newspapers in England was so funny because I think the British might be more stern and more uh -huh. you know stoic yeah. in their appearance, uh -huh. and so um, they describe her as being smiling all the time, and they don't quite know what to make wow. of that—a queen who's smiling all the time. Uh -huh. And so there's one story. My favorite place on the whole journey was uh, when we went to Norwich. Now I don't know if you know where Norwich is. It's on the. Um, I don't. Okay, it's in. 
It's in England, and okay. it's the, the southeastern part of England, and it used to be a very important um, town in the Middle Ages for trade. Uh -huh. um, so they have all of these uh, natural waterways that they've made, the broads. So she wanted to go to Norwich to see what a country estate looked like and to see an old town. And they had this cathedral there in Norwich, about an 800-year-old cathedral, and she visited the cathedral. And there's this place not too far from the city that uh, it's called Pine Banks Tower. And Pine Banks Tower is still there today. The actual main building has burnt down, but the tower itself is still there today and I wanted to see the tower because I knew the story the Queen had gone they had taken her after a full day of touring Norwich the city itself seeing the castle seeing all kinds of other things having lunch with the mayor they take her to this uh, Pine Banks Tower and um, the, the children are singing the national anthem, and this is the British, you know, the, the, their national uh -huh. anthem. She stops the carriage, she listens to the children. She loves children. Queen uh -huh. Capilla just loves children. She listens to them singing. Then they go and they, they invite her into the home. She goes, oh, well, I think we want to spend it outdoors. It's such a beautiful day. Uh -huh. And so they go outside and they bring the chairs, and outside and there's this big tower out in the garden area. The tower's only about four, uh, four stories high. And so I wanted to see the tower because I knew that the queen had ascended the tower. So at the end of this two hours of music and bagpipes and all kinds of songs, they even played Hawaii, um, the Hawaiian national anthem. Really? Yeah. Wow. So um, they, they were playing all of this music and they're enjoying their summer uh, day uh, um, there at, at Pine Banks Tower. So at the end, she decides she wants to climb the tower. It's a spiral staircase. It's very steep. And I'm looking inside. I didn't go up, but I got to see inside. It's a narrow staircase. Imagine Victorian era gowns, wow. right? And she's got to go up. Yeah. She gets all <laughs> the way to difficult. the top and she's waving to the people down below with her mm. lauhala fan. She takes uh -huh. her lauhala fan everywhere with her. Uh -huh. um, and so she's waving to them and smiling and you could tell she's really enjoying herself. Wow. So I wanted to go because today it's the only place on the whole journey where they have a plaque. Uh -huh. And on the plaque it says HM, Her Majesty. Uh -huh. Queen Kapi'olani uh -huh. ascended this tower, 6 June, 1887. Oh my So I got goodness. a picture right got next picture. to the tower. You got to be right, right there. So, but I got to learn about, wow. she, she stopped to listen to the children uh -huh. sing. She, she wanted to climb the tower, uh -huh. right? Um, she waves to them. She's enjoying herself so much wow. yeah, when she gets up there. And then they put a plaque up there. So it's the one place that someone asked me before I left, is there, there going to be anything along the way that's going to prove our queen was there? Uh -huh. And that's the place, oh Pine my Banks gosh. Tower. So that was mm -hmm. a highlight of your trip. Yeah, yeah, for me it was. So it wasn't London and it wasn't Westminster. Abbey. I thought that was great to be in Westminster sure, Abbey, to be yeah. standing in the spot where she stood to see how intimate and close that was to the Queen of England and how much respect they had given our, yeah. our monarch. And that was great, but I don't know, it was Pine Banks Tower, even though it was rainy and it was yeah. a, not a great day in terms of weather, yeah. uh, but it was just a, a wonderful experience. Right? Was it a, a grueling experience too? Because you're, right. you're telling me that it, this it is a, a very long journey, journey a right. very tiring yeah. journey. <laughs> right. So Queen Kapilani was also probably very tired during right. this time so as well. for her she kept a really packed schedule morning afternoon evenings into the into the night and I didn't know quite why I think she was trying to pack everything into it it was a chance of a lifetime for her too she's never been to the United States or to England so for her she's learned all about these places her husband had gone before her a couple of trips to these places and so she hasn't been and so she wants to get the most out of it she's visiting the schools along the way she's visiting a number of fire stations along the way wow. interesting enough yeah. um, and she's just a uh, um She's just using it as an educational experience, uh -huh. I think. Uh -huh. And so it was a packed schedule for her. And so in those days, you know, if you go to a ball in the evening, they actually will come to pick you up at like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night for a ball that starts like 11 or midnight. And wow. I think I figured it out. I, I think it's, it's because the, the sun didn't go down to 9.30. Yeah. And so here she has a packed schedule. Yeah, she's visiting school. Yeah. She's doing everything during the day. You think she'd be exhausted yeah, by really. that. Yeah, really. And off she goes to a ball in the evening, right? So I didn't do any balls. Yeah. I didn't have all that grand royal stuff. But uh -huh. it was pretty neat, yeah, um, to be able to, to, to just uh, do what she did. So every day there was something on our agenda, morning yeah. and afternoon. Yeah. And we weren't using the old ways of transportation necessarily, so we were using cars and Uber and subways mm -hmm. yeah. um, when we needed to, but we usually had appointments in the morning and afternoon visiting different places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's pretty amazing. Yeah, so one of the stories, if I could, uh, when she was um, traveling, she actually visited fire departments, right? So. There was a fire in, Ho in Honolulu in 1886, not the big one in 1900, mm -hmm, the Chinatown mm -hmm, fire, mm -hmm. but in 1886 there was a fire in Honolulu. So in this trip in 1887, she's actually investigating fire departments in San Francisco, Boston, and New York, and she has them give her these fire firemen putting on displays. They go up ladders, they show her the hoses, how they mm -hmm, rescue people. Mm -hmm. So in New York, we see the actual fire headquarters that she visited, and the fire headquarters building is still there, and wow. it recalled for me the story that after the big display of going up and down ladders, showing her how they rescue people, you know, using the fire hoses and whatnot, 
um, then she called the firemen over and she asked, what does it take to be a fireman? Mm -hmm. And they said, pluck and nerve. And she says, ah, if I was a man, I'd be a fireman. Because she wow. thinks she has nerve. <laughs> so I thought to myself, wow, that was fucking nerve. nerve. You know? She has fucking nerve. Yeah. And I thought, that's great. Of course, the newspapers, Spunky. yeah, the newspapers <laughs> thought that was pretty funny. The yeah. queen wants to be a fireman, right? And they have a go at that. But oh, I thought that was interesting. I did it. You know, yeah. in my research of her, most of the research is not really her writings. Yeah, Most of the research is about what other people are saying about uh -huh. her. So I haven't found, I found some letters she wrote to Father Damien, but I have not found actual. Um, uh, diaries or anything for mm -hmm. her. So mm -hmm. I'm putting, piecing the stories together based on what others are saying, what the newspapers are saying. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is they're pretty consistent in the way they describe her personality. So these are people who don't know her. They mm -hmm. don't know who this, they know she's a queen and they, mm -hmm. they're just observing her and they're describing her. So she's just smiling. She seems to love the children. She waves at people. She's wow. so gracious and kind. Yeah. So. And she even, she, when she can't use theater tickets in New York, she gives it to the hotel staff, you know. When she's in, uh, in Norwich staying at Rackheath Hall, mm -hmm. she calls over the security detail from the police force and thanks them for being her security detail. Wow. So she does all these little things that she didn't have to do. Yeah. Um, and it just makes the newspapers. And so for me, it just it, it helped me learn a little bit more about the Queen. And I think I know her a lot better now. Yeah, I think thanks to you, we all know <laughs> yeah. her a lot better now. Yeah. In closing, mm -hmm. uh, Colette, mm -hmm. What have you, what else would you like us to know about Queen Kapiolani and you? Oh, about, <laughs> about Queen Kapiolani? I think um, she's a great example of a, a woman who's a leader um, and a woman who likes to lead from behind. And so I kind of, I'm inspired by her uh, because she's, she's a woman of status and she uses her status, mm -hmm. but she helps the least fortunate, right? Mm -hmm. So she wants to make sure the babies live. So that's why she opens up the hospital. Mm -hmm. Her other big charity was um, helping the people with leprosy. So she visited wow. Kalaupapa in 1884. She writes these letters to with Father Damien. She, she um, actually sends care packages with people's names on them for all the people living in Kalaupapa. Mm -hmm. So she really was caring for people, the least fortunate. And she does it all without fanfare. So here's a woman of very high rank. She's noble. She can operate in those, that environment. Mm -hmm. But then she's not afraid to go into every home in Kalaupapa and to ask people, how can I help? Wow. She's, not, she's not afraid to, to uh, address people who are the least fortunate, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in those days, right, the least fortunate. She really wants to help. And so I, I'm inspired by her way that she just wants to assist and she wants to do whatever she can to mm -hmm. assist people most in need and without all the fanfare. So different from her husband, Kalakaua, right? So Kalakaua is the guy who wants to be the front. He's the merry monarch, you know, he's enjoying <laughs> life and all that. She's much more reserved, um, but she's, she's doing it, you know? Yeah. She's making things yeah. happen from behind, and that's the yeah. kind of leader I want to be. I want to be the kind of person that leads from behind. Mm -hmm. I don't like to be out front, kind of leading the charge, but if I can be behind, mm -hmm. and I can inspire mm -hmm. people and sort of get them moving in the right direction and yeah. kind of join, join the group, then that's the way I want to lead. So I, I'm inspired by her and her, you know, and what she did. I'm inspired by you, <laughs> by her and you. And yeah. if people want to go to your blog or mm -hmm. your website, uh, right. can you share that with us? Uh, yeah, so you basically, um, it's a WordPress site. So it's in the footsteps of Kapi'olani. So one word, no spaces. So in the footsteps of Kapi'olani.wordpress.com. So basically, I, I wrote 44 posts. It's over 42,000 words and over 400 photos. Nine different cities, right? All the different forms of transportation. So um, it's all up there, all the photos and everything. And I wanted to do it as a blog so people could not only follow me, but I wanted it to just live in perpetuity, you know, so others mm -hmm. can go and learn about her. So years down the, uh, down the line, others will happen upon the blog and they might learn a little bit about the Queen as well. So I, that's what I wanted to do. Awesome. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much, oh, Colette, welcome. for sharing this very <laughs> yeah. special time with me and with us. My pleasure. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you too. And aloha. Yeah. aloha. All my earthly pleasures, I will glad. How to love and how to share Greed and lust and vanity was mine, Lord Then I found your love divine Then on my knees I pray I may find a way Let me walk to paradise with you